good morning dear children welcome back to the statistics class where we are discussing the chapter measures of dispersion so we have already discussed the definition the objectives as well as the different properties of the various measures of dispersion next we'll discuss the different types of the measures of dispersion so what are the various types of measures of dispersion means they are absolute measures of dispersion as well as the relative measures of dispersion absolute measures of dispersion means it is expressed in the same units in which data is expressed so what all the units are given in the same manner we have to express in the data for example it's, if it is rupees or if it is kilogram or if it is liter or kilometer so these are all the different units in which we measure the different variables so here we have to express it in the same manner but whereas what is the difference in the relative measures of dispersion dispersion means it is in the form of a ratio or percentage and so it is independent of the units so in the relative measures of dispersion there is no need of units because at that is in the form of a ratio or the percentages so it is also called as the coefficient of dispersion so these are the changes between the absolute measure as well as the relative measures of dispersion so children in this absolute measures we have to express in the same units given in the data whereas in the relative measure it is independent of the units given next what are the various methods of dispersion first one is a range next is interquartile range and quartile deviation next is mean deviation standard deviation coefficient of variation and lorentz curve so children these are the various methods of measuring dispersion so first one is range next is quartile deviation or it is also called as interquartile yes quartile deviation and the other measure is interquartile deviation the next is mean deviation standard deviation coefficient of variation lorentz curve so these are the various methods of measuring the dispersion so we'll just take into consideration the first one the range yes the range means it is the simplest measure of dispersion and it is defined as the difference between the largest and the smallest values in the series and it is denoted as in the alphabetical manner r equals l minus s yes. so what is this r means that letter denotes as range this the r the capital letter r denotes the range and the capital letter l means it is the lowest value of that given data that is the l means it is the largest value of the s yes, value in the given data and the s is the smallest value in the 
given data. So that is R equals L minus S, largest value minus smallest va value in the given data. And the coefficient of range. So I told you about the two measures, absolute measures as well as relative measures. So here the first one is the absolute measure that is a range equals yes that is the largest value minus smallest value then coefficient of range that is l minus s divided by l plus s so as if in the same manner largest value minus smallest value divided by the largest value plus smallest value So that is the, yes, about the range. And this is the first measure of dispersion. Next, we'll discuss about the second measure, which is known as interquartile range and quartile deviation. So here, interquartile range means it's a difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile. So, quartiles means children, we know that the whole we can divide into four parts, right? Yes, if the whole means if it is a circle, we can that divide the circle into four equal parts. And each segment is called as the quartiles. Yes, that is, so how many segments will be there? Four segments will be there. So, four quartiles also will be there in a circle. So, here it is that is Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. These are the four quartiles in a circle. So, or otherwise in a whole we can divide into four equal segments. And it covers the dispersion of middle 50% of the terms of the series. So here, that is, upper quartile can be represented as Q3 and the lower quartile can be represented as Q1. So children, carefully listen to this. Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. In this, Q1 means it is the lower quartile. And what is this Q3 means? It is the upper quartile. Then, interquartile range equals to Q3 minus Q1. That is, what is this? Upper quartile minus lower quartile. And how to calculate the quartile deviation? It is the half of the interquartile range and it is also called as semi-interquartile range. So, symbolically, the quartile deviation equals Q3 minus Q1 divided by 2. So, how to calculate the quartile deviation, children? It is the half of the interquartile range. Already we have discussed about the interquartile range. How to calculate the interquartile range means it is Q3 minus Q1. And quartile deviation means it is the half of the interquartile range. So here the quartile deviation equals the formula to calculate the quartile deviation equals q3 minus q1 divided by 2. Then, so this is the absolute measure of dispersion. And what is the next one? Coefficient of quartile deviation. So that is the relative measure of, yes, quartile deviation. 
So, what is the relative measure? Coefficient of quartile deviation. So, it is the relative measure of quartile deviation and the formula to calculate the coefficient of QD equals Q3 minus Q1 divided by Q3 plus Q1. So, children, what is this coefficient of quartile deviation? Yes, that is Q3 minus Q1 is the formula to find out the, yes, interquartile range. So, here coefficient of QD means that Q3 minus Q1 divided by Q3 plus Q1. So, children, I hope these two measures, the range as well as the quartile deviation is precise for you. So, thank you children for watching this video.